start for the uh, frenzied video from before. Um, that was just as I had opened it and started to uh, inspect it. So if you want to know how crazy I draw, that's my hectic nature. So uh, when we come in here, um, I'm going to delete those. Uh, I'll show you why. So here's our center point. Um, if we turn on our degrees of freedom, basically shows we don't have any of these constraints set up. Um, so we'll set some of these basically so they have I'm not turning. That's one of the main things. You set up first, in my opinion. Um, make sure it's up and down, and then do distance. Um, this one you'll want to make a center line. Now what that does is it encloses and closes out the shape, um, and includes that as far as a diameter reference. So when you select it, you'll actually get the diameter show up. Okay, so let's do a overall dimension. So it's always nice to have. All right. So put it to the center because I'm assuming you want this face to be measured at some point. So now we're fully constrained. We basically have our diameter dimensions. It's clean. Um, you have a chamfer here at the end. Um, the jury's still out. You could do it here. Um, it's up to you. So that way you have it all included in one sketch. Let's redefine this and choose your center point again. And chamfers in this area. So there's that. Um, if you really wanted to get fun, um, you could come down to here. Figure out what your thread depth is on the min max. Um, let's call this one. So your standard tooth. This thing is set to equal. So fully constrained. Turn our thread back on here. And we will clip along the axis. Is the origin because we're still there. Oops. The other way. And pitch and height. You can get that from your thread calculations. Height, maybe the 150. And your pitch. So when you're putting a thread on, um, in your first operation, you'd want to plan for a chamfer to be put on so it enters the uh, part a little bit easier, um, among other things. So put a chamfer here. Um, you can do this after the fact with the chamfer outside. Um, I always like to do them inside because um, you'll see that at the end of the part, we'll only have one revolution and one coil and nothing else. Um, so it kind of just keeps our tree simple, and um, you can define everything in the sketch. Um, Jury's, like I said, out. Uh, um, now we got to increase the runout, so we'll pull a dimension off the end here to add to the actual length. Since it's sticking off the part, we have to go all the way through the part. Um, and it gives us a smooth runout. So I hope that helps a little bit more. Um, you know, just kind of if you want to have the thread stuff on there um, instead of just the visual one, it looks more uh, exact.